Hi, welcome to Savenge Cow Part 3 and the latest edition, the transition curve. First of all, I'd like to refer you to a video in which the transition curve example used to make this video was taken from. The YouTube address for this video is written in the description below. The reason why I'd like to recommend this video is because the lecturer who narrates this video does a very good job explaining why transition curves are used. She'll take you through right from the start of the design process up until the point of generating a setting out table using the distance and offset method for setting out the transition curve. She also mentions another method as well, which is um, setting out using deflection angles. Um, for what I would like to do is I would like to uh, basically build on that um, video and uh, um, I'm going to use another method in where, where I'm turning those set, setting out angles and uh, points into coordinates. Um, yeah, so they'll be turning into um, eastings and northings. And I'd like to include offsets on that transition curve as well, which, which can be a little bit tricky, but um, the Savenge Calc app transition curve, actually, it does the offsets for you as well. Um, Right, I've got a little picture here showing you a, a transition curve. This is the example that was explained in the video that I've referred you to. Um, so basically what we've got is we've got um, a road coming through from this way here, going along here, and another road coming along this way as well, along here. So basically they're coming in on their, their own bearings. There's two different bearings. This has got its own bearing. This one's got its own bearing. And the, and the point that they meet in the middle there is called the intersection point there, right there, okay? And this, is, this, this angle here is the intersection angle that's come from that. So, um, and what, what we'll do is we'll call these lines for now, we'll call these the tangent points. So that's the tangent point there, and this is another tangent point here. Okay, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go into a little bit about the uh, bits that make up make up the curve in a minute. But what I want to do is talk about the offsets. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the actual center line of the transition curve coming up here, which is the spiral. So it's um this will be tangent to spiral. This is where the actual point of where the straight finishes and the spiral begins, which is there. And it works its way up here and as it as it comes up up the tangent point it slowly starts creeping off there making the spiral here to actually connect with the simple curve which is that point there so that is the end of the spiral beginning of curve there okay so as you can see that those points have actually come off the tangent line now here to meet up with the curve so with the offsets, say for example we were to um, offset from the, um, the the spiral at 90 degrees relative to the tangent line. Now that offset, if we came from here, this point here, from the centre line offset, we'd end up along this line here somewhere, which is uh, which is which which is only relative to the actual um, spiral tangent, but it's not really relative to the actual uh, offset of the curve which is there because that comes through at the radius here which is there so it, they're, they're, they're not in proportion to each other so what what Savenge calc transition curve actually does it, it will fall for the whatever offset distance you've got it will recognize what that distance is there and then what it will do is it will it will calculate so let's go right back to the beginning here. It will calculate right from the right uh, right from the start. It will slowly spread the cost of that opening up along here. So over here it would be nothing. There it will slightly come off the uh, come off the 90 degree line there. Slightly no opened up, opens up, opens up, opens up, up even more right up until we get to this point here where it actually ends up on the uh, the curve offset. So I've made the offsets in proportion to the curve and the spiral. So that they'll be proportionate. And um, if I just show you what, what they, they do. So for example, if I wanted 10 meters there, offset from there, there you go, you can see it's 10 there. Do another one, 
10 there. It's 10 meters there as well. So whatever distance you set for the offset, it will it will recognize what that distance is there and it will make the offsets proportional proportional to both the spiral and the um, simple curve for the offsets and it, it does that both sides and it will do that for the uh, both sides of the curve as well so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a look at the app okay so this is the trans transition curve app on some vintage calc and um, I'm just going to explain to you what these are. Right, we've got TS. These are the coordinates here. Transition start, TS. I think I've already mentioned it, but we'll just go again and have a look. So TS is this point here, right at the beginning. This is tangent to spiral. So that's the end of the straight and the beginning of the spiral, which is that point there. Let's come out a little bit. Go back to the uh, knit to the app. Then we got ST. This is spiral to tangent. Okay, so now we're going to the other side of the curve. Spiral to tangent. So spiral to tangent is end of curve, which is that point there. It's the end of curve, and it's also the beginning of the spiral on the out, on the exit. So end of curve beginning of spiral spiral out so as it comes through it's going to come back down here all the way back down to the tangent that the tangent line to there and this is spiral to tangent that's that point there end of spiral beginning of tangent so basically it's both ends of uh, the curve Right, I just want to explain to you um, about the hands of the curve as well. So we've got um, a left-hand curve and a right-hand curve. I'm actually working this out as a right-hand curve at the moment. So if I was to stand here at this point here, looking up chainage, the curve actually bends around to the right. That makes this a right-hand curve. And on the other hand, if I was to stand at this point here, looking up chainage, if we was looking up chainage there, the curve bends around to the left, so we would be working on a left-hand curve. So that's the difference between left-hand curve and right-hand curve. Okay. And then we've got the uh, tangents intersection, which I think I've already mentioned, is that point in there. We'll just zoom in a bit. That, that point there, that's what we need there, the coordinates of that. And then we need the spiral curve lengths. And, and in the video that I've re recommended to have a look at, which this example was taken from, they actually show you how to calculate the spiral lengths there. And I'll show you where the spiral lengths are on here, just to recap. So the spiral length would be here at the start. So it'll be um, tangent to spiral there that point there, TS, and if we come right the way up here, it would be not where the point is, it would be there, actually on the tangent line there, it would be to that point there, that would be the distance there, so that's the actual um, uh, transition curve distance, is that there, to that point there, and you'd need exactly the same on the other side as well. So you need this 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 point here as well from that point there to that point there, not the actual point itself, but that there. So it'd be the distance along the tangent. Okay, let's go back to the app. Okay, and then you'd need the uh, curve radius. That's a simple curve radius. So what we're looking for is this here to the simple curve there into the, into the uh, center line there. So that radius. And then uh, obviously the start chainage, which would be whatever the chainage is at TS there. And the uh, chainage interval as well, as, as you're going up here, the intervals in between them. Um, 
And when you enter the data into the Transition Curve app, always press Save. So after you've entered everything that you wanted to put in there, always press Save. There's two reasons for this. The first reason is um, you can always come back to it and call it up at a later date. So it's always going to be there until you change it and press Save again. And the, the other reason is I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Okay, but I've already entered the stuff into here. All I'm going to do is just press call up and there's everything there. So there's all of my coordinates here. Everything's in there. Okay, I'm doing a right hand curve. I'm, I'm not touching the offset at the moment. I'm leaving that alone because um, I'm just working out the center line. So all I have to do that from that, that point then is once I've got all the information in there, let's just go calc. Ignore that. That's just if you're on a mobile device. Okay. So what we've got there is it was, we've now got the center line here of, of um, the, the spirals. You've got the, the spiral to the beginning of the curve and the uh, end of curve to spiral. So the only bit that you're missing is the simple curve in between those. And I'll show you how we get that in a minute. So spiral to beginning of the curve, end of curve to spiral. We've got that. And that's the center line coming up through there. This point here to that point there to the beginning of the curve and same on the other side that would be that point there coming right down to that point there okay right back to the app so now, the other reason why I said to you have to save this is because for each new calculation, you have to do a reset, then call up. And the reason for that is because they, it all shares the same print page. And if you didn't do a reset, everything would go on, onto that print page and it just it just gets messy and gets jumbled up. So because I've saved it, I can do a reset and I can call up. Now I want to do a left hand side offset. I'm doing a right hand curve. So a left hand side offset would be. I'll, ju I'll just do the I'll just do the chord the get do the calculation for a minute. Do left hand side offset. This box opens up here. I want to do 10 meters. Okay, that. And then I'm going to go calc. So now I've got all my left hand side offsets for the spiral spiral to the beginning of the curve, and all the offsets on the left hand side for the end of curve to spiral on the other side. So what I've got there is all of these points here, right up to that point there. And on the other side, still a left hand side, we've got all of those points there, down to there. Okay. So, and the other thing to note with this is uh, it doesn't matter what side you're setting out of, if it's the left hand side or the right hand side, the um, all these points going, you don't need to do a, a negatives for one side and a positive for the other. They all go in as a positive. OK. So and, and the other thing to note is as well, because this is right hand curve, obviously looking up chainage, left hand side is going to be the outside of the curve. Right hand side is going to be the inside of the curve. Now, if you was on the opposite side and you was doing a left hand curve, then the right hand side would be the outside and the left hand side would be the inside. Again, you don't have to worry about if they're negative or positive, you just put them in as a positive. The app sorts it out. Okay, let's go back to the app. And uh, now I'm going to do a, a reset, call up. I'm going to do right hand side, offset 10 meters. Okay, that. I'm going to go calc. And there we go. We've got all the uh, right hand side offset, the inside of the curves, offset at 10 meters. That's all that done. So now what I want to do now is um, I want to do the uh, the curve. So up here in the right hand corner, you've got a, a little button there called CVHZ. That's curve horizontal. Just click that and uh, automatically the uh, data needed to cal calculate the, uh, the, the simple curve part of the transition curve is already loaded into there now. And this is the center line data in here. I don't have to press save because when I hit, click that button CVHZ, it automatically saves and I'm ready to go. 
So for the center line of the curve, all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go count. This will give me um, uh, some some information about the curve, the simple curve, which is explained on the uh, on a previous video that I've done. So that always comes up. And then I'm going to go print, go OK that, and there's the center line of all the curve there. So that's all of that point there, all of the points along there at 10 meter intervals, all the way down to that point there. So I'm going to go back to the app. I'm going to go to CVOZ. Again, I'm going to go reset, call up. I'm going to offset left now. 10 meters. Okay. And then I'm going to go calc and then print. Okay, that. And there's all my um, offsets, offset lefts, which is all of that line there, all the way through there which will be down to that point there. So the points, actually, you, you'll get these two endpoints twice. You'll get it once on the um, on the uh, spiral, and you'll get it again on the, uh, on the curve, because they both use the same point. So now I'm going to go back to curve HZ. I'm going to go reset, call up, right hand offset. Again, 10 meters. OK. I'm going to go calc. Then print. Okay, that. And there's all my um, offsets for the uh, the inside of the curve, for the right hand side curve, which is there. That's all of that line in there, right the way to that, down to there. So basically, folks, that's it. That's the um, the uh, transition curve on Savenge Calc. Um, the next thing that I'm going to add to Savenge Calc will be. Um, uh, I'm going to put a traversing application on there and I'm also going to do super elevation as well and I'm going to do like a um, I think I'll do a, a rise and fall leveling thing as well okay right I hope that's okay for you thank you very much